how a transistor work. To understand how a transistor work, you need to know the two circuits in a transistor. Okay, the two circuit in a transistor. Uh, this one connects to the center here. The middle here is is the base or is the emitter or is the collector? It's the base. Huh? Okay, the one in the middle is the base. Huh? So this is the base. Uh, let's say this is the emitter. Okay, the emitter. Now, how do we know it's emitter? Emitter is connected to the base and collector. Okay. It connect to the base and you connect to the collector. So let's say this is a collector. This is the collector. So in this case, okay, the cell eh, okay, is connected in this way. So therefore the currents move in this way. Eh? The current move in this way. For this circuit, the current move in this way. So there are two circuits in a transistor circuit. Eh? They have two circuits. The one that connect from the emitter to the base emitter to the base is called a base circuit or sometimes we call it emitter base circuit okay we call it emitter base circuit okay and the, the other one is called the collector circuit or sometimes we call it the emit uh, sorry the collector uh, we call it a uh, emitter collector circuit eh? so we have base circuit and collector circuit or emitter base circuit emitter collector circuit uh, the base circuits connect the emitter and the base and the collector circuits connect the emitter and the collector so you must know these two circuits eh? okay because if you know these two circuits then you then uh, you know whether the connection is correct or not so that is the connections uh, we'll discuss how it works later now in a transistor the base must always connected uh, forward bias okay the base is always forward bias uh, how do we know forward bias okay forward bias is when the positive terminal of the cell connects to p and the negative terminal connects to n positive to p negative to n then it's forward bias okay so so the base okay the base must always uh, forward bias uh, then how about the collector circuit? The collector circuit is always reverse bias. Reverse bias. Uh, let's see. Okay, the negative, the negative is connected to n. No problems, right? Okay. Negative to n, uh, negative terminal. But the positive positive terminal is also connected to the n type semiconductor. Okay. So if positive connected to the N type semiconductor, then this is reverse bias. So this is reverse bias. So the base circuit must also is always uh, forward bias, and the collector circuit is always reverse bias. So this is the connections. Eh? This is the connections of a transistor. Now let's see how a transistor work. Eh? Uh, okay, now this this connection is correct. Okay, the base is uh, forward bias, and then the collector circuit is uh, reverse bias. Eh? Okay, and then there is a two bump here. There's two bump here. Okay, and uh, this table uh, shows the an experiment is done on this circuit. Okay, we have two switch switch one and switch two in this circuit, and this is a transistor, and we have bump one and bump two. Eh? Okay, so uh, let's see. Eh? Okay, what will happen if we switch on these two switch okay in different way and what will happen huh? okay uh the first one okay the first one is uh the cross means we switch off huh? the so the first one we switch off the we switch off switch one switch one is off okay when uh switch one is off okay but one huh? what will happen to the but one will it light up or not light up switch one is off so will this light up or not light up uh, it won't light up. Why? Because there's no current flow, right? Because switch off. Switch off means the current cannot flow. If the current cannot flow, then the bulb won't light up. Okay? No. Eh? The answer is no. Okay. So let's put a cross. Okay? To show that it, it does not light up. Switch 2. S2 is also off. Disconnected. Okay? It's open. Open means it's off. Okay? Open means it's off. And then so, so what happens to B2? Okay? Will it light up? Yes or no? No, right? Okay. That's correct. It wouldn't light up because the circuit is not complete. The circuit is not complete, so no current flow. Okay, no current flow. Fine. Then how about the second? 
experiments. The second experiment, we switch on S1. We switch on S1. Um, so what happens to B1? But one? Will it light up or not? Yes or no? Light up or not light up? Yes or no? We switch on S1. Yes. Okay, that's correct. Okay, that's correct. Why? Because when you switch it on, okay, you switch it on, then uh, the circuit becomes complete and it's forward bias. Forward bias means that the, the currents can flow through the the, the diode here, this is a bi diode. Huh? We have a diode here, we have a diode here, right? Okay, so it's a forward bias and it's a complete circuit, so currents can flow and B1 light up. And S2 is off. S2 off means the BUP2 will not light up, okay, because there's no current flow. Eh? There's no current flow here. This one should be no problem. Eh? How about the third experiment? We switch off S1. Now we switch on S1, uh, of course, B1 will not light up, okay. Because there's no current flow, it's open. Uh, it's an open circuit. Eh? No current flow. Then how about B two? How about B two? We switch on S two. Okay, we switch on S two. Then uh, the second circuit, the collector circuit, is complete. This is a closed circuit. That is a complete circuit. Okay. So what will happen to B two? Okay, make a guess. What will happen to B two? Will it light up or not? Yes or no? B two. We switch on S two. We switch on S2, okay? So will it light up or not? No. Why? Because it's reverse bias, right? It's a reverse bias. So even though even though the circuit is complete, but currents cannot flow. Current cannot flow. It's reverse bias. Uh, so even though S2 is switch on, okay, but current cannot flow because it's reverse bias. Very simple, right? Okay. How about the last one? Last one. Okay, we switch on S1 and we switch on S2. Okay. When we switch on S1, uh, the bot one light up. This one no problem because it's forward bias. Okay, it light up. Okay, then how about B2? How about B2? So will it light up or not? We switch on S2 now. It's reverse bias. That's correct. Okay, the bot will light up, even though it's reverse bias. Okay, so this is the experiment. This is the result of the experiments. So from here, we learn one thing: the collector circuit. Is controlled by the base circuit, even though the collector circuit is complete, it's a it's a closed circuit. But if we do not switch on the base circuit, current cannot flow in the collector circuit. If there's no current in the base circuit, there will be no current in the collector circuit. And if there is current in the base circuit, then there will be current in the collector circuit. So we say we say. The currents in the collector circuit is controlled by the base circuit. I, I, will, I will tell you the relationship later. So now, for the time being, just need to understand that. Okay, the collector circuit is controlled by the base circuit. So if the base circuit is off, then the collector circuit, no matter this on and off, okay, there's no current flow. Eh? Okay, so that is the result of the experiments. Let's explain why. Why the currents in the collector circuit is controlled by the base circuit? Eh? Now, when you see I draw the transistor, you will find that the collector and the emitter is purposely drawn very thick, and the base is purposely drawn very thin. Okay, let's say this is an NPN. Eh? This is NPN. So this is N type, P type. N type semiconductors. So in N type semiconductor, there is a lot of free electrons. There's a lot of free electrons. Uh, N types, a lot of free electrons. Okay. So you see, this is this is NPN's uh, transistor. Okay, we have N type semiconductor, P type, and N type semiconductors. N type semiconductors uh, consists a lot of free electrons. So all the dots here so represent the free electrons. Eh? Now the P type semiconductors. Okay, when we make transistor, okay, p-type semiconductor is make very thin, and is likely dotted. Likely dotted. Okay, if you still remember, likely dotted means that we only dot with small amounts of impurity, and therefore it only contains small amount of hole, just small amount of hole. Now. If we connect this this way, okay, let, let's erase this. We connect this positive 
and uh, this negative okay negative and this is reverse bias why because positive is connected to the n type semiconductors okay and when it's reverse bias we know that currents cannot flow okay currents cannot pass through the pn junctions because there's a, a barrier voltage in this pn junctions eh? so there's barrier voltage so electrons cannot pass through currents cannot pass through and there's no current flow uh, that is reverse bias but if the base is forward bias if the base is forward bias uh, positive connected to the p type and negative connected to the n types then because it's forward bias okay it's forward bias then it can it can allow the electrons to pass through this pn junctions right it can allow the electrons to pass through the pn junctions because it's forward bias eh? because it's forward bias so electrons can pass through the pn junctions here okay because the base is very very thin and is lightly adopted so if the electrons move into the base and if the electrons fall into the hole eh? if fall into the hole then it will jump from the hole to another hole to another hole and come out then it will go to the base but how about if the electrons pass through the pn junctions but it does not fall into the hole because there's just small amount of hole is lightly dotted just small amount of hole so most of the electrons does not pass through the hole that does not fall into the hole and this base is very thin so if it's very thin after it passed through the first pn junctions okay and then this is positive eh? okay so then it can be pulled by this terminal and pass through the second pn junctions okay it passed through the second pn junctions and the electrons move to the n-type semiconductors and then move to the positive terminal and then complete the circuits and come here again and the same thing happens again so from here we can see yeah, if only the collector circuit is on because it's reverse bias so the electrons cannot pass through the base but if the base is forward bias then it can move the electron pass through the pn junctions and because the base is very thin and it's lightly adopted so the electrons can pass through the base easily okay because it's forward bias already the electrons can pass through the base easily then after it pass through the base then it will go to the positive terminal and then it complete the circuit and currents can flow okay currents can flow that's why the base control the collector circuit the base circuit control the collector circuit if the base circuit on forward bias then the collector circuits uh the, is, is completed okay so the currents can flow and because it's lightly adopted okay it's lightly adopted so small amount of current flow in the base eh? okay let's say just maybe just 0 0.1 ampere small amount of current flow okay the current flow is because when the current the, the electrons move into the hole eh? move into the hole move into the hole and then uh and then go out okay but most of the electrons does not fall into the hole okay most of them does not fall into the hole eh? and they move to the collector circuit so when there's small amount of current flow in the base you will find that there will be a high current flow in the collector maybe the collector we have a 2 ampere small amount of current flow in the base will 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 yield a high current flow in the base uh, sorry high current flow in the collector why because the base is lightly adopted so most of the electrons does not fall into the hole so they pass through the base and go to the collector circuit okay and 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 that's why transistor can be used as an amplifier just small amount of currents can uh, produce a large amount of currents in another circuit so that's how it works that's s1 off okay so this is our S1 here. Okay, we have S1, S2, and then we have our B2 and our B1 here, right? Okay. When S1 is off, okay, the electrons cannot go through the, the base, okay? Because there's a barrier voltage here. The electron cannot pass through the base. Electron cannot pass through the base. Uh, then uh, you can see the resistance become very, very high at the PN junction here, okay? Because... Uh, uh the, the the barrier voltage here 
will prohibit the electrons from here to move here. So then B2 is off. Okay, Chimbing? But when this is on, then the electrons can pass through the base easily because this is forward bias. Forward bias, so the electron can pass through the base easily. So the resistance becomes very low. Okay, ah, then B2 on. Okay, so let's go back to the slide. Okay, so conclusions. Huh? The collector circuit is controlled by the base circuit. If the base circuit is on, then the current flow in the collector circuit. If the base circuit is off, then the current, there's no current flow in the collector circuit first. Second, the currents in the collector circuit will always much higher than the currents in the base circuit. Okay, it's always higher. Why? Because the base is very thin and is lightly dotted. So most of the electrons can pass through the base and go to the collector circuit. So uh, just small amount of the electrons will go to the base circuit. So the currents in the base circuit will be very small and the currents in the collector circuit is very big. Okay, And that's why transistor can be used as an amplifier. Okay, well, So just small amount of currents can produce a large amount of currents in the collector circuit. Okay, so that's the conclusions.